Hello, my name is Stacy Lewis, and I will be doing a mini teach for Thompson, Tompkins strategy number 26, which is the open mind portraits. I am teaching to a class of first graders, and I have two individuals with me. All right, boys and girls, as you recall yesterday, we read Horton Hatches the Egg. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about that. First, I want to do something. I want you to look at these words on the board. These are all emotions or feelings. Can you show me what your face looks like when you are happy? Very good, you're smiling. What about when you're mad? Show me your mad face. Scary. What about excited? How about scared? Finally sad. Well, a lot of these emotions, all of these emotions, are ones that Horton felt during our story. So today we're going to look a little bit deeper at some of the emotions that Horton felt and when in the story he felt these. Before we begin, let's go over real quickly our vocabulary words. Yesterday we did a worksheet where you unscrambled the words and then you used them in a sentence to show that you understood what they meant. So let's quickly go over those before we begin our lesson. Our first word was lazy. Who can tell me what the word lazy meant? I can. Yes. It means that you don't want to do something or, or you're not excited about doing something and you just sit kind of like a right. slug. Inactive was the word we used yesterday. Inactive. What about faithful? What's it mean to be faithful? Yes. Yeah, when you're faithful, that means you, uh, you try, to, try to be with somebody and, and do things right and always be loyal to them. Right. You very can be good. their friend, too. That's right. Yeah, you can. Very True. good. What about absurd? If I say that's absurd, what does that mean? That's nuts. That's it's crazy. Nuts. It's ridiculous. Very good. Scarcely. Oh, that means when something hardly happens at all. That's right. It means barely. Just a little bit. And swooped was our last one. Birds swoop down to get food. It's like they come down really fast and then they get what they need That's and then they right. go right back up in the sky. And in our swooped. story, it was a bird, Maisie, who actually swooped down. Very nice. Good job, class. All right. Now, I want to know if anyone can recall how Horton ended up sitting on an egg. The bird made him do it. The bird did because the bird was what? Lazy. Good. Can you imagine for a moment that you are Horton? And I want you to think of a time in the story where you as Horton felt happy. And let's make a list of those times. When did Horton feel happy? Anyone? He was happy when he got to go back home. That's right, when he went home. mad. Who can give me an example of when in the story Horton was mad? Oh, I can. Uh, that's when Maisie left. He was mad. That's right. He was mad when that lazy bird left. He didn't want to have to do all the work and she made him do all the work. What about excited? Can you think of a time in the story where Horton felt excited? I think he was excited when he got to go home. He was both happy and excited. So both those Very times. Very good. Because you can feel more than one emotion at a time, can't you? You can yep. feel happy and excited, or maybe you're both sad and mad. That's right. Yep. What about scared? Um, I think he was scared of the hunters or the, the mean guys in the story. And I think he was also scared to have to sit on the egg because he wasn't sure if he was doing it right. That's right. Hunters. Let's put that up there. What about when, when was he sad? And he was sad when he had, when he had to leave his home, when the hunters to took him home. all the way across the, the world to, was it New York? It was he New went? York. And, and they were sad. He was sad because he doesn't want to leave his home because that's, that's where his friends and his family were. Yeah, I think you're right. Very good. Yesterday we looked at a map. We actually looked at a globe yesterday to see how far it was from Horton's home in Africa to New York. We're going to take a quick minute to do that again. So I want someone to show me on here how far Horton went. Now we 
have up here on the screen a map, and this is the part of the world where Africa is. We talked about how we weren't sure where Horton was from, but we guessed maybe Madagascar. Can I have a volunteer to come show me where we decided Horton might have lived? I will, Mrs. Lewis. Thank you. I've seen the movie Madagascar, have you? Mm -hmm. And so um, we said it was like over here. That's right. Now I'm going to move this, and I want you to tell me to stop when you think you see New York where they took Horton. I think I remember from yesterday. This is so much cooler than the globe. Okay, stop. We live about right here, that's but right. you said that New York was all the way up here, and that's where they took him. That's right. Very good. Thank you for volunteering. You're welcome. All right. Now we're going to do what's called an open mind portrait. I have an example to show you, and what we'll do is I'll show you the example, and then we'll each complete one, and we'll share them together as a class. So, if you'll take up, look up on the screen again, I'm going to shut the lights off again. This is my open mind portrait. Now, the one that you will be getting is not colored. Can you see it? All right, now that we've got the technical difficulty out of the way, this is an open mind portrait that I completed of Horton. And as I said, this one is colored, and if we have time, you'll be able to color yours too. However, yours is just black and white right now. The front is just a picture of Horton's head. There's a brad here that holds it next to a blank page, which I have drawn pictures on and words. So what it is, is it's like looking inside of Horton's mind. What did he think and how was he feeling at different parts in the story? Things that I drew on mine were the words faithful, 100%. When we read the story, we, went, we said those words many times. Horton would say, an elephant is faithful, 100%. Here is a picture of the circus tent. And I wrote the word homesick. He was homesick when he was at the circus. Here is a picture of the egg hatching. And I wrote excitement over the egg hatching. And then here, when they were on the boat, seasick. What I would like for you to do as I hand these out is I would like for you to complete at least four pictures or words. If you want to use one of mine, that's fine, but I'd like for you to do your best to think of at least three on your own. And then when we are finished, we will share them with each other. Mrs. Lewis, is it okay if we don't spell everything perfect? Can, can we ask for help for our spelling? Of course you can. I want you to do your best with spelling, but the purpose of this lesson is to decide what Horton was feeling and what he was thinking. So I'm not too concerned with spelling at this point. Oh, good, because I need to work on my spelling. Go ahead. Okay, does anyone want to share maybe just one of the things that you drew in your open mind portrait with the class? What's one thing that you put in your open mind portrait? Megan? I drew a picture of a hunter and I put scared because he was scared when the hunters came and took him away. So I used the word from the board because then I'd know how to spell it. But my picture looks really good and my picture doesn't match any of your pictures. So it was like it was different. Very good. Anyone else in the class would like to share? And you could have used any of these words too that we used that we talked about at the beginning. I used homesick just like you did, but I um, drawed a different picture, not of the tent. So I used your word, but I, I drew a different picture and I drew um, Horton with a frowny, kind of sad face because he was homesick. And I also put tears coming out of his eyes and onto his trunk. Very good. Anyone else like to share? Oh, I, had, I put down mad. I drew a picture of a, of a person in his face. His, 
is you do a frown. Or, yeah, kind of like the facial expressions that we used earlier at the beginning of the lesson where we showed what it looks like to be mad. Yeah, like you're right. Excellent. Sure. Okay, well, boys and girls, I'm just so glad that, that we went over this lesson. I'm glad that you were good listeners. And now if you want to take out your crowns, we have a few minutes and you can color your pictures. Thank you. Yay, I love to color. Oh, me too.